Paris, as you can see, it idles like it's supposed to now. Uh, it's a little high. I think we need to make some adjustments, but for the general purposes of getting the car running, it runs and it runs like it's supposed to. What were the issues? Uh, let's talk about that. What we did with this uh, is follow up a simple process. Uh, so really, if you look on the internet and you, you could just actually Google Fox Body Hunting Idol and hundreds of threads there's probably thousands of them out there on the forums from years ago that are um, incomplete people uh, chased issues and when they never came back to report what the issue was that helped solve it um, so hopefully this will help guide a little bit again these this is exactly what we did to solve the problem on this car um, so it may not be exactly what would be for your car but hopefully what we did may offer some you know I guess light I don't know information whatever you want to call it to um, help you solve your problem if you're watching this because um, you're trying to solve a hunting idle issue so the car itself would not run the rpms would jump up and down and, uh, and eventually it would die so the first thing we did is unplug the idle air control valve that can work against you because it's if it is functioning the computer is going to overcompensate to try to keep the engine running and so it can work against you uh, so unplugging that and ramping the throttle up with the throttle screw to get it to where it will at least idle um, we did that the next thing we did was put a timing light on it during the time that we were putting the timing light on it, which it fell into place, it had I think 12 or 13 degrees of advance. During that time, uh, it was just pig rich, like to the point where opening all the doors in the shop, opening the windows, doing things like that, it still would not air out. Um, so, turned the car off and was like, okay, so probably have a fuel issue. Pulled the spark plug out, and it was just soaking wet. Um, you can see uh, in the image here that I'm showing you that it was extremely wet, and of course black, because it's running rich. Okay, so I'm gonna attack the fuel pressure regulator next. So, get um, to where I can get to it, remove the upper intake, and when I pulled the upper intake, um, a bunch of gas fell out of the vacuum lines. And a matter of fact, it fell out of the runners too. And we're talking, you know, probably two or three ounces or more, enough to where it was pooling inside the upper intake. So, <clears throat> I've had this issue happen before. And it's not surprising because the car sat so long. Um, the fuel pressure regulator had an internal failure and so it was sucking fuel into the vacuum system. I did check the oil. There is no gas in the oil, thankfully, but um, I think I found a majority of the issue in that. Luckily, a good buddy of ours, instead of throwing good money at bad, because in a situation like this, you could literally spin your wheels and um, if you're not testing properly um, you can spend your wheels and spend money on things you didn't need to spend money on and so ended up getting a stock fuel pressure regulator it was used but it was off of uh, a friend of ours car that had he had literally just done an upgrade last month so it was in perfect working condition off of a running car and we put it on um, then put everything back together double check the vacuum lines to make sure there was no vacuum leak anywhere and we started it up when we started it up um, it was a lot better but it was still hunting a little bit and with that ended up replacing the idle air control valve with a motorcraft piece of course and um, that solved both the issues so my assumption at first was idle air control valve which 
was partially to blame, but the biggest culprit in this was fuel pressure regulator. And it was an aftermarket piece, a uh, BBK unit, which probably, well, it can be rebuilt, but um, I don't know that I, I would put this back on the car. So um, anyways, it's, uh, that was the culprit. It's also got an O-ring failure in it too, so. Uh, somebody didn't install it. See you there. I would uh, recommend that when you're doing these things, you just have a bit of petroleum jelly laying around. If you put a uh, little petroleum jelly on the O-ring, it'll go right in. Uh, it's the same thing as gas, petroleum gas, so it's no big deal. But that's a tip on O-rings that you use it on fuel lines and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can just put uh, Vaseline, petroleum jelly, just generic. It helps things go better, go better, go together better without um, ruining O-rings. So, a little tip there. Something else I really want to talk about that I didn't mention in the previous video is that I actually opened up the computer to this car. Uh, known failure for these cars these days at the age they are at is there's a well, there's three capacitors inside the computer that can cause well, a couple of conditions where the fuel pump runs constantly and the injectors don't fire. Um, there's a couple of other things along with that when those capacitors fail or one of them fails, it causes uh, certain symptoms. So if you get a car that's been sitting a while, if you've got things that um, are like that and you've spun your wheels, uh, replacing sensors or putting a new fuel pump in or a new fuel pump relay, uh, take the computer out, open it up, because there's three capacitors inside, and I'll show you video of which three there are, and it's pretty much all the same on mass airflow computers. The speed density may be a little different. I've not torn into those, but I know on the mass airflow, can, the, the ones, the A9L, A9P, X3Z, etc., etc., um, they have the three capacitors in those three locations. Uh, there are repair kits on eBay. There are uh, local electronic stores, I'm sure, that have capacitors in stock that you could use to replace them. Um, so that's something to look at when you have a car of this age that's been sitting or one that is giving you a headache that uh, you haven't looked in the computer yet. So a little tip, hopefully that helps. But the car itself now is running great. Um, we haven't driven it. Don't think I'm gonna drive it. What we're gonna do next, which we've already started, is to remove stuff to get ready for paint. But that's it. That's where we are right now. Um, really appreciate the comments uh, in the last video. A lot of guys had some great knowledge. Um, there's uh, a lot of really good information that can be shared. Uh, sometimes it's difficult in text to, to read voice inflection and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I enjoy that conversation, good or bad. You know, I think there's a lot that comes from it and there's an education on both sides of the keyboard that can be had. So, um, but I really appreciate it. it it's, uh, you know, a lot of good suggestions. You guys have got plenty of experience. You've worked on your own cars. You're watching this because you enjoy Fox Bodies or Celine's and you have stuff that you want to get done or have done. And that experience can, can help other people out. And I greatly appreciate that. I really do, thanks. Um, as always, whether you're driving them or restoring them, Always enjoy them. Peace.